I said bombs. Huh. What are they good for? Absolutely everything. Bombs are awesome. Tanks giving you problems? Drop a bomb on it. Infantry capturing a point? Drop a bomb on it. Everything goes better with bombs. It's like Tabasco sauce. So hey everybody, welcome to chapter four of the Heroes and Generals Flying Tutorial. I'm Old Man Smithers, and today we're talking about dropping the bomb. So you know that sound you hear whenever you're in infantry and you hear the plane overhead and you're not really worried and all of a sudden you hear the whistle? Now if that's a good pilot, you're dead. You're not going to get out from underneath that bomb in time. Same thing with a tank. If you hear that whistle over your tank engine, you know the pain is coming down. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to drop bombs with precision. And I'm not talking about the whole fly over a point and just drop a bomb and hope you hit something. I'm talking about hitting the target identifying what you want to drop a bomb on and then making sure that bomb actually hits it not blows it up hits the target if it was an infantry guy we want the bomb to knock him out before the blast kills him so let's get to it bombs <laughs> Let's start things off on the right foot. Infantry has actually spotted its target. Good infantry. Let's go see what it is. All right, and pause. So the first arrow that you're looking at here is an APC. That's what the infantry uh, spotted for us. The second arrow is the 109 nose. That's the plane that I'm in. We want the target to get inside the nose, the nose just to cover the target. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you where we release. Now, that's where we released. So we pan back around and look, virtually a direct hit on that APC. APC is obviously no longer there, nor is the pilot. So all good, right? We want it to be a direct hit. We don't want just the bomb to hit. We want the direct hit. Okay, so let's keep on going here. Now I'm looking behind us and look at that Jeep. You saw the Jeep that just pulled in there? Right there. This is what I'm talking about where you want to have the next target lined up. You always have to be looking. Now stop. Now you see that parachute out in the distance? I've got a Jeep right there. I've got the parachute in the distance. I need to line myself up for multiple targets because you only get so much time. So let's go ahead and take a look at that Jeep. I'm gonna cannon him, not gonna waste a bomb on him. So yeah, I can see that parachute he dropped, but look over there as well. I see something by that building. It looks like another APC right there. You always have to be looking. That's why the camera comes into play so much. So let's cannon this, this Jeep and then go take a look. Maybe we can get the driver. Nah, no driver, that's okay. So I'm coming in and then, oh my God, look, there's that parachute guy right there. Now I was gonna drop the bomb on the APC. Now I'm gonna drop the bomb right in front of the APC just to get it. I'm gonna drop it right whenever the nose passes. Now, so we just dropped the bomb, boom. Look, we got the infantry and we just got the APC too. And that's what I'm talking about. Right when the nose passes the target, that's whenever you need to go. So let's take a look at this at full speed and uh, show you just how fast paced this goes. So two recon vehicles plus an infantry, not a bad little bit of work for 15 to 20 seconds worth of gameplay. That's what I love about planes. They can really help out the team. Now, just remember what I was talking about though. In the 109, you want that target to just get underneath the nose. Like the nose covers the target just a little bit. Remember that first arrow, when it meets the second arrow, that's whenever you release the bomb. If you get good at this, you can literally put these bombs into windows. You can put these bombs into sandbag AA turrets. Uh, that's why I'm so on the, the get a direct hit kick rather than just good enough kick. You want it to get it to where you can become a master with this kind of thing. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at a couple more situations and I'll narrate our way through there. Won't take that long and then we're gonna move to the P-38 because that one's just a tiny bit different. Still the same, but just a little bit different. All right, first up we have Jeeps. Jeeps are quick, so you have to lead them a little bit. So see, he's taking off, he's going in there, and now, I'm gonna release, boom, got him. Gotta lead him just a little tiny bit. This is Jeep related as well, but this is more of a do not do this if you're a Jeep machine gunner, because I'm just looking around for something to bomb, and then all of a sudden somebody starts shooting at me. So I come in, and now, now you notice that little thing that I just did, it went boop, and then I dropped the bomb? That was with debug controls, which you should be able to do now after chapter three, right? All right, so now I'm looking around for infantry. There's a lot of infantry. I cut the engine so I have enough time. And look, oh, there they are. I see them. 
come in and release now. Boom. So it's all about seeing the target before you drop. Don't waste the bomb, they're, they're precious. You'll notice I'm using free look cam a lot as well. Free look cam is awesome for bombing. It sort of lets you look around, uh, get you a wider frame of view. Some guy's shooting at me, I don't know why. Now, and bomb as well. Don't shoot at planes. I mean, you can. Jealous Elephant killed me just the other day with a scoped rifle, but just know you're probably gonna get a bomb in the face for doing it. So now let's take a look at the P-38. It's a little bit different from the 109, uh, but same concept applies just with a few slight changes. Look at that big, beautiful beast. All right, stop. So whenever you're turning, you're not doing anything. You're not really looking at anything. So always be using your free cam to spot targets. You see that Jeep there? Spotted him when we turned. So now let's go ahead and get him. So we're coming in on him and stop. So now what we're looking at is first person view. In the P-38, the cockpit is much shorter than the 109. So in the 109, remember how I said the cockpit needs to cover the target before you release? In the P-38, you're gonna bomb too late if you do that. So I always tell people to get uh, the target right in between those two cannons. See that little nub of the machine gun that's poking out there? Whenever the target touches that, that's usually whenever I tell beginners, that's when you need to release. So let's get him. He's getting out of his Jeep and running and drop. So, nope, he didn't get out fast enough. So we got him there. Now this next one I'm leaving in just to show you that it happens to everybody. Don't, don't beat yourself up about it. You see that friendly infantry running? There's that Jeep, I'm trying to get the Jeep and congratulations, I just killed a friendly. Now, of course, I apologize to him right away. Uh, he was cool about it. Most infantry understand that it's gonna happen. Just don't go bombing your infantry over and over again and most of them will forgive you. In this case, they say, I just left it in there just because it does happen. It usually happens to me once every five or six matches. And it's, it's, un, it's unavoidable. It's gonna happen. Just make sure you apologize to the poor infantry that you just bombed, the friendly infantry. Enemy can go screw themselves. So bombing, like everything else in flying, just takes practice. There's not a whole lot more than I can show you. I just wanted to give you a couple of narrated examples of whenever I release the bomb on specific targets, like if they're moving, if they're not. Uh, just remember, if there's one thing that you can take away from this video, all beginner uh, pilots, whenever the target touches the nose of your plane, if you release the bomb there, your bombing will improve 150%. Guarantee you. After you get a little bit more comfortable with it, Remember that on the 109, the target needs to be covered by the nose. You want to let the nose go just past the target before you release the bomb. On the P-38 with a shorter cockpit, or with a shorter nose before the cockpit, uh, I usually say just the machine gun nub. If you release it right there, you're, you're going to hit the target. Keep in mind though, uh, like we were talking about during a plane comparison, the P-38 has those offset bombs. So you, if you're trying to do precision, and the only time you really need to do precision is like for sandbagged AA guns or something along those lines, know which side. So I usually just check real quick. Left bomb, okay. So I offset it a little bit to the right and then I wait until it would hit the nub and then I release. So that way the bomb hits directly where I want it to. It's tougher to do precision bombing with the P-38 than the 109. Also remember that bombs have inertia. So in other words, if you're flying like this and you release the bomb, of course the bomb goes down because it's it has the same speed as the plane, right? But also if you like turn a little bit, it'll also lob out to the side. So it just depends on what direction you're going. One of my favorite tricks to do is on uh, the airfield. Tanks and infantry will be hiding in the hangars because they think they're safe from me, right? But right before I get to this, so like here's the hangar and here's me. You like my little models? These are pro models. Here's me. Whenever I'm coming there, I'll pull up just a little bit right before I release the bomb. And I pull up hard. So it's actually like this. And then right whenever I pull up, I get myself a little momentum and then I'll release the bomb. So the bomb actually, it releases up at here and it actually goes into the hangar before it blows. So it doesn't blow like right in the front, it doesn't hit the roof, it lobs inside the hangar. So all these guys think they're safe and then all of a sudden they just have to watch this bomb come towards their face, it's beautiful. Pisses people off and you get mad kills from it. And you get to take care of those tanks that is just destroying your team and they think they're safe. They're not safe, they're not safe. So use the inertia on the bombs, that's another thing. Speaking of tanks, tanks almost always take two bombs to kill. So as soon as you drop a tank, a bomb on a tank, you need to be looping back around to take that second pass. The only uh, difference is light tanks. If you hit a direct hit on light tank, like literally the bomb has to hit the tank itself, it will catch the tank on fire. Now, it's rare to get a, a light tank, 
or it's rare to get any tanks really in matchmaking these days, uh, except for war battles, and there's not a whole lot of air ATs. But if you're lucky enough to get tanks, just remember two bombs for a tank, one bomb for that light tank. Probably want to put two bombs on the light tank just to be sure. Another thing, remember the APC that I, I was after with the infantry in front? Remember I said I was going to put the bomb in front of uh, the APC instead of on top of it? There's a reason for this. Whenever you direct hit something, it, it's a buggy part of the game. But when you direct hit something, there will be no explosion. You won't even hear the boom. Uh, you'll think you missed, like you might as well not even drop the bomb. But if you turn around, it does damage the vehicle. But because there's no explosion, there's no blast radius. Infantry, if they're around that, like if you're after an APC and you direct bomb an APC, the infantry will survive. So anytime that happens and I see multiple infantry or just one infantry in the case of today uh, in front of a specific target of mine, I'll usually put try and put it on the ground between the infantry and the APC or the tank or whatever. So that way the blast radius kills the infantry and it does damage to the, the APC as well. Like we saw today, it was enough to catch it on fire. So it all works. So that's it for bombing. Uh, next video, we're going to do dogfighting HE. Fun stuff. But I hope you learned something on uh, bombing. If you have any questions, feel free to hit them in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. That really helps me out as far as the YouTube channel goes. And I will see you in the next chapter. Oh, you like video games? I like video games too. In fact, I like making videos of video games. So if you like what you saw here and you want to see more of it, go ahead and hit subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also catch me on Facebook, Twitter, or OldManSmithersGaming.com all of which will let you know whenever I'm online and streaming. Also, make sure you check out some of the videos that we have here. We have other tutorials. We have some Let's Plays. It's just all about having fun. So appreciate y'all joining me. Hope to see you around.